former Pope admits to giving false statements in sex abuse investigation in the Vatican. Former Pope Benedict XVI has admitted to giving a false statement in a child sex abuse investigation. He initially denied that he was present at a 1980 meeting in Munich during his tenure as the Archbishop of that diocese. German police acquired documents proving that he was indeed at said meeting, at which point he admitted he had attended, calling the inaccuracy of his previous statement a quote-unquote oversight. The admission came four days after a report was released on abuse in the Archdiocese from 1945 to 2019, which said that the former Cardinal Joseph, or it would be Joseph Ratzinger, which was Pope Benedict's original name, uh, failed to take action against clerics in four cases of alleged abuse while he was the Archbishop between 1977 and 1982. One case involved an approval from Ratzinger in 1980 of a police to be transferred to Munich for therapy. The police was then allowed to return to pastoral work. That same priest was found guilty of molesting another child six years later. Martin uh, Pusch, a, lo a lawyer at Westphalhall Splicker Waltz, German man, oh my God, uh, said during the press conference, quote, during Ratzinger's time in office, there were abuse cases happening. In those cases, those priests continued their work without sanctions. The, the church did not do anything, end quote. Wait, so how come, like, wouldn't this, is it, wouldn't other people get arrested for stuff like this? Like, how does this work? So, well, interesting question. Prosecuting people involved in the Vatican or particularly living within Vatican premises is very difficult internationally. But um, let me give some of the background. So about two years ago, there the Archdiocese of Munich commissioned an, uh, an independent report into their uh, diocese uh, be after in 2000. Eight or 2010, there was a massive scandal about the depth of abuse going on within the German uh, Catholic Church at large. And the this investigation, again, conducted by um, an independent uh, service, found, and let me, let me emphasize, I didn't realize this at first, this is a single archdiocese of Germany, not all of Germany, a single archdiocese. Um, that between 1945 and 2019, there were almost 400 instances of abuse that have happened, and they believe that um, that uh, number is likely much larger due to the lack of reporting. Um, and it exposed how there was many instances where it was fully known and understood that the church um, that some of these people were abusers, that there were reports or accusations against them. And they allowed them to continue um, having a role, an active role within the church. Um, and some of these people were even faced like criminal proceedings and prosecutions, and they were still allowed to have an active role. Um, it became particularly bad when uh, they would refer priests to quote unquote therapy and then let them continue. But then years later, they would go on to hurt other people again. Um, and in terms of this issue with the, about his, like this meeting that he, um, Pope Benedict attended. So the, his, um, the Vatican or his representatives were saying that, oh, well, this the way that it was reported previously where he denies that he was at this meeting this was actually like a clerical error this was like a mistake it wasn't bad faith we weren't trying to cover up anything this was a misreporting in the editing of this report um, he didn't actually try to lie and cover up stuff um, but it's not a good look yeah i mean you would i i don't you would think that this this is such an important document for them to put out you know what i mean like i i bet like they double triple check everything and their main priority is to 
just protect themselves, right? I don't think like where where did this happen? Like like he was like this is happening within Germany, Vatican, specifically right? Munich. Again, this is only no. the oh, Archdiocese wait, he... of Munich. No, but when when he says like admits to giving false statements, former Pope, he was he in Germany when he did that? Yeah, he was the, the Archbishop of Munich. Okay, so five years. So he can get protected like so so at that time wouldn't Germany's laws apply to him? Where is he right now? He's still in the Vatican right now, right? Yeah. Like that's where he lives. I mean, they have to deal with Statue of Limitations. Shouldn't there be an arrest warrant for them? Like, just to, like, investigate this? Shouldn't, like, Interpol be involved? Like, I don't know how this works. Like, why is this, like... Like, wouldn't, like... I don't know, okay? I'm asking, okay? But I I must... I mean, like, if there was a major cover-up by another entity, like another organization, right? Like, let's say, like, a car manufacturing company. Like, let's say that they had there were some safety issues and they figured it out but they were trying to cover it up for the information to come out um i think like there would be like some warrants for some arrests or something like that like there would be court dates right um am i wrong i will say am i like no, yeah. I think you're you're totally justified in believing that. You know, I unfortunately things aren't uh, that easy. <sighs> yeah, um, there's been many attempts to try to use international law to prosecute um, people who were abusers or allowed abuse in the church, and thus far in Europe they haven't been successful. Um, and it's gone all the way to the um, like the Supreme Court of Europe or whatever the 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 highest body for the EU is. Um, but I can say that is good news is that German authorities are, um, they have said that they are going to prosecute, um, because there are many people who are revealed in their support and their involvement or what they did or what they didn't do. And the German authorities are saying many of these people are still alive and we are going to investigate and uh, pursue prosecution towards them. So it won't be towards the Pope specifically, but it will be towards many other people who are exposed in this Why in, in not? inquiry. Why can't it be against the Pope specifically? Why can't we target the, the ex-Pope? Well, first of all, like I said, uh, it's very difficult to prosecute the Vatican internationally. But he was in Germany when he did that. He was in Germany. I know, but we have a statute of limitations too. I'm no lawyer, but all I know is people have tried in the highest bodies of the land or the continent have rejected them. That case okay, is a Mustafa, little bit different. I completely, but... Mustafa, I love you, well, I, but I completely disagree with this. Okay, like he's rich and he's white. Enough said. Bullshit. There's a whole bunch of rich white people in prison right now, very rich and very white people <laughs> that are that are rotting in prison right now because of cover up of crimes. So, I don't think if the Pope was black. He would be like, shit, I'm in trouble right now because I'm black. I think his him being an ex pope I think him being an ex pope has more to do with this right now than his color of skin. I think like, yeah, I think the Vatican would be as effective at covering a black ex pope as a white one. So there you go. Yeah. What so. I think was really interesting was um so there he's the pope the former pope has released some statements on this and uh, many people have found them to be lacking so there was even heavily criticized by father hans zollner um so he's in germany and he's a member of the pontification pontifical commission for the protection of minors which was created by pope francis as well as the safeguarding institute at the pontification gregorian university in rome and he was going off on Pope Benedict for his response. Um, so here's a quote from Religious News Service. The Emeritus Pope is expected to release a comment on the report in the coming days, but in the meantime, he voiced his closeness to his former diocese and its faithful, as well as his, quote, shame and pain at the suffering inflicted on the victims. For his part, Zollner feels that there are portions of Benedict's response that, quote, that are simply not consistent with Ratzinger's other writings. For example, he pointed to one section in which it suggests a priest accused of masturbating in front of a young girl did not constitute abuse since there was no touching. This is completely off, Zollner said, pointing to the work of 
Ratzinger when he was the head of the Vatican's Congregation of Doctrine, which also oversees cases of clergy abuse worldwide. Um, he said, the response was probably only signed by Ratzinger, but written by a team of legal experts, he added, but that's part of the problem. There's been a lot of people who also came forward to defend the Pope because um, during his tenure, he um, made some changes to canonical law and um, in terms of like how these things are ha handled within the organization jurisdictionally that really change um, a lot of things and, and it means to address the abuse because um, he believed that there was, I mean, there was a demonstrated failure of the archbishops to handle it um, as, as well as they should. And so it was really bringing it under the jurisdiction of the Pope, so to speak, um, at the same time that, that that office was really failing to tackle the problem. Like, one thing I was hit with when I was doing the research for the story was, um, you know, I've kind of grown up in a generation where it's been well understood that this is a huge problem in the Catholic Church. Like, I feel like maybe a generation before me, like, this bombshell was a lot more shocking, and now it's just kind of expected and accepted. Um, but even just reading this and just doing research for this one story, I was immediately hit with how much there is how deep it goes it's crazy um every time we cover a story like this i'm all over the world everywhere it's incessant it's innumerable i'm like how is this how is this not it, it reminds me of what armin says i was like how have they not shut down this whole thing it's crazy yeah i think if it was any other this is religious privilege if it was any other organization there would be a lot more people in handcuffs right now yeah um ego is asking oh we we decided to call ego what you gave erica. Her, her name erica erica is saying is it possibly an issue of dip diplomatic immunity since the vatican is considered a country i mean he did this in germany is it, it um so it, when you're trying to sue the catholic church um all of a sudden, the Catholic Church status as a sovereign state gets brought into the picture. So it depends on who oh you're issuing God. the suit against. If you're trying to issue it against the Catholic Church at large, things become difficult because all of a sudden it can, mm. it, it's like Pokemon evolve. This, like now I'm a country. And then how do you go is, after an entire sovereign state? This is why we're trying to find a small piece of land somewhere. Okay. And then maybe do a fundraising and buy it. It doesn't, it just, it could be just like very small. Okay. It could just fit like one house on it. Okay. But then we buy that and then we say, we claim it to be an ACES Republic. Right. And then we try to get independence or whatever and just like file, like become a sovereign nation, file something at the UN. I, I, I you know, I looked into this. It's pretty easy. Right. And then we could just do illegal stuff and then nobody can do anything because I'll just, you know, make myself a senator, right? We'll make Susanna like a president or something. And then we could do illegal stuff. And then we have diplomatic immunity because we're a sovereign country. YouTube, we are not promoting illegal activity. That is a joke. It, it wouldn't be legal because we, we're our own country. We could go establish it in that little area of the Sahel that no one, no country wants to claim because it's so desolate. Yeah, There's we don't like, even have to be yeah. there. We just don't have to even be there, right? We just have to be like, you know, that's... By the way, yeah, we are joking, though. We're not going to use this stuff for illegal activity, okay? Because that would, like, be bad for Atheist Republic. Okay, so we're not going to do it. <laughs> but we could, okay? I, okay, so if we did try to do illegal stuff, we would do illegal stuff not like the church, okay? We wouldn't be abusing children. We do illegal stuff that shouldn't be illegal, right? For example... um blasphemy right like True. that yeah hey guys if you're a fan of blasphemy and sexy Callie, you know like me then you need to be sure to subscribe to our newsletter link in the description below because if you subscribe we will send you a free copy of our blasphemous art ebook and let me tell you it is the tastiest blasphemy that you can find anywhere available today and we are so generous with our blasphemy that we continue to send you more blasphemy every week so make sure to subscribe link in the description below